got a couple representatives who will introduce themselves, have some statements, and be happy to answer your questions uh, as they come up. All right, Chief. Good morning. Uh, I'm Chief Mark Lasicko of the New Craig Police Department. Uh, obviously, this morning uh, we had a threat at a New Craig Middle School. Uh, that's why they're all here. Uh, we received the call, uh, our Scott County Dispatch received the call at 7.55 this morning. We had officers responding from Savage, Shakopee, Prairie Lake, Belle Plaine, Jordan, Lonsville, the DNR, Rice County, Scott County, the Sioux County, and the Minnesota State Patrol, both on, ground, uh, on the ground and in the air. Uh, we also had North Ambulance and Ridgeview Ambulance responding uh, to assist us. Uh, officers uh, did a search of the uh, both the middle school. It was originally reported that uh, this took place at the middle school, which is right across the street here. Uh, during the investigation and further into uh, doing the, conducting the search, we had information uh, uh, indicated to us that it was uh, also could involve the central education campus, which is across the street and a little to the south of the middle school. Officers conducted a search of that uh, school also, and uh, uh, the investigation there at the CEC uh, led to uh, one student of the New Craig School District uh, being taken into custody. Uh, and the investigation uh, leads us to believe that that student uh, was the only student involved. And we are currently not looking for any other suspects or people that are uh, involved in this, this incident. Uh, the investigation is still uh, active, but again, we have every reason to believe through the investigation that this student uh, was making a prank, a hoax. Uh, the parents of the district uh, have every reason to believe that the schools are safe, their students were safe uh, the entire time that this incident was taking place. Um, I also want to publicly acknowledge the uh, middle school and central education campus staff uh, on the fine job that they did protecting the students, uh, utilizing the code red drill uh, uh, training that they have been involved in. Uh, it went very smooth. They did a very good job. And all the students are safe. No one was injured uh, in this incident whatsoever. And again, it's still active. Hi, I'm Larry Coslerich. I'm superintendent of New Prague Area Schools. And much of, uh, be reiterating much of what the police chief told you, we received the call about eight, around 8 o'clock to go code red. And we did that in all of our buildings in our district. We have six buildings and we went code red in all of them. Uh, again, I'd like to compliment our staff and our students because we practiced these drills and they went very well. After that, the uh, law enforcement were on the scene very quickly and we turned it over to them, of course, for their expertise and followed their lead. That's what happens when you're in a bus garage, I guess. Uh, we did decide uh, to dismiss our school. Our elementary had not started yet. Our middle school and high school were on two shifts, our two different time frames. And so our elementary was just on their way to school. So we turned our buses around, took those children home, and uh, got out on our message system that we have that we can get out to all parents and so forth to let them know that. Uh, our biggest concern, of course, always is the students. Our concern in sending children home, of course, is that we have elementary children who, especially smaller elementary children, younger, younger ones, who may not have anyone at home. And what we told our bus drivers at that point in time was to make sure that someone was at home at all where the children went. If they weren't, they would bring them back to school and we would have them in the gymnasium of the middle school and the parents could pick them up there. So we think all of the children in our district have been our home now and are safe. I would like to say for parents, uh, there was never a time when your children were really in danger. All precautions were being taken. Again, complimenting the law enforcement. They were here very quickly from all different uh, parts of the uh, law enforcement community. 
and they did an excellent job. Uh, with that, we saw our decision to dismiss school today, or let it out early, we just felt relieve anxiety. We know things like this, when they happen, there's a lot of anxiety on the part of parents, and also students. We thought it better just to go home early, and we'll be re resuming school tomorrow on our regular uh, normal times. Uh, we'll also be meeting as a school administrative and leadership team staff this afternoon to go over what happened today. Uh, and no doubt we'll have counselors available to students who need them. And if there are any parents who feel they need to talk to someone, they can also contact us, and we can put them in uh, contact with one of our counselors. Thank you. I'm Kevin Burns, Director of Public Affairs for Mayo Clinic Health System. Upon hearing the news this morning, Mayo Clinic Health System in New Prague implemented our incident command, which is our highest form of emergency response in preparation to receive any patients or anyone else who may need medical attention. Being in constant contact with law enforcement in the school district, we did place the medical center on lockdown, which is standard precautions and standard operating procedure during an incident like this. It was very clear that as this unfolded, that uh, this was not going to require medical response. We de-escalated in about 60 minutes. But I want to emphasize, as you've heard from other officials, is that community entities from throughout the New Prague area regularly and routinely practice and hold disaster exercises to help us all prepare better as a community for events like this. That involves law enforcement, um, uh, fire and life safety, emergency management, the medical community, and others, and including the school district. So we have every confidence that had this been a real event or had this ex escalated, that everyone on every level would have been appropriately able to respond in the best interests of our children, of our patients, and of our community members. At this time, we'll respond to questions you may have. Chief, is the student who was taken into custody uh, the same person who made that 911 call? Uh, pardon me? Is the student who was taken into custody the same person who made that initial 911 call? Yes, we received two 911 calls from the same uh, phone, and yes, that is the student. And did that student report that there were two people injured? Uh, yes, at the time. Okay. What else? That, that, that was quickly determined uh, to not be the case. After just, when the initial uh, uh, entry into the schools by officers were made, that was quickly determined that nothing had taken place. And is that student a middle school student? Uh, he's a student with the school district here. How old is he? A 12 year old student. With their own phone? Or what? Uh, yes. And how close together were those calls made? I believe four minutes apart. Uh, something in that nature. I don't have the exact timeline. But saying essentially the same thing in both phone calls? Yes, the same information coming, uh, making a clarification of what building it actually was. And saying what in the phone calls? Uh, just that there has been a shooting in the, at the school and uh, two people were in there. And what exactly, what, it was a male student? I'm sorry. A male student, yeah. What exactly was he taking the custody for? Uh, at this time, uh, that's being determined by the county attorney's office. I'm not going to speak any further about him because of his age uh, or the charges, uh, but he is in custody. Do you know the, Do you know the motivation for the threat? No, I don't. No, I don't. Can you speak maybe generally about the danger of making these kind of threats? Well, obviously the response that it creates, um, you know, we had an overwhelming response and a, a huge concern and obviously the safety threat of the kids, uh, but of all the uh, law enforcement time that's being consumed or has been consumed and will be continue to be consumed over this uh, prank. Uh, people have to understand it. In this day and age, you have to take these things very seriously. And we do. We did. And uh, we were fortunate that it came to a, a closure, a resolution to it, that it was a prank and that we uh, do own the responsible part. How quickly did officers arrive? Uh, within minutes. Uh, I was one of the uh, first officers to arrive, and it was probably a minute. Do you happen to know how many officers ended up arriving in total? No, I don't know the specific number. Um, I would guess uh, in the neighborhood of any from 35 to 50. I'm not, I'm not sure of that. When you found the student, did he have any notes on him? Did he have any like, plan drawn up or anything? Can you speak a little bit about that? No, I, uh, I didn't conduct any, uh, uh, or I didn't do any part of that investigation. I have detectives that are uh, from the Shakopee Police Department that are doing that or have to, uh, did that now. Uh, so I have very limited knowledge of what's taking, taking place. What was his demeanor when he was taken in? Did he acknowledge what he did? Or? 
Uh, I do not know that. How when, did you? Oh, go ahead. When I uh, when I left, uh, uh, the uh, investigators were still uh, speaking with the uh, uh, student's father. How did you find it? Um, the one of the investigators from Shakopee. Uh, Shortly after uh, getting information about the call and everything, uh, had uh, conducted an investigation and kind of a, a uh, new direction to pursue, and he ultimately was uh, right and successful in, in finding this, finding the student. Did the student make a, a call from the phone that traced back to him? Uh, as of this time, I'm, uh, we have not confirmed that. Uh, but the phone does match uh, the phone that was used. Uh, okay. Was the, it a cell phone? phone? It was a cell phone. Uh, the phone was deactivated uh, with only 911 functional, and, and we are confident that we have the, the phone. The search warrant will be conducted at a later time uh, to access the contents of the phone. Gee, how, old, how old is the student or what grade is he? 12, I said. Do you know this grade? Pardon me? You know who's No, I don't know who's great for sure. About what time did you start to think this was a prank? Um, after we determined which building we were, you know, which buildings we were going to search, um, it, it came, it became fairly apparent to me uh, reasonably for probably 20 minutes to a half hour after I uh, spoke with the administration uh, and the principal staff at the schools. Okay, we determined that no one had heard any type of report of any, um, you know, so we, and again, not being able to locate anybody in the specific rooms that uh, were reported to be injured, uh, we felt uh, shortly after that that it was a hoax. And you criticized like, sensitive issue for so many people right now. What message do you want to get out to kids about this critical training? Teachers, kids at school needs to be a safe place to go. This type of conversation or the uh, discussion, Facebook comments or discussion about this type of school violence, uh, joking about uh, hit lists, joking about um, other school related or, or threats related to friends at school. Uh, parents need to teach your kids that they absolutely cannot participate in any of that. It, it spreads so quickly, it gets out of proportion, uh, and other kids learn from that and they create or, or um, cause incidents like we're here today. Um, just plain, a plain hoax that law enforcement has other issues to deal with. The school obviously has to, uh, uh, they're there to educate kids. Uh, they're not here to be locked up in a classroom in the dark hiding for hours. Um, and I'm sure Larry can answer that better as far as the school. I don't know that I can answer better. Police Chief does a really good job. <laughs> yeah, it is very frustrating that we in education, as you know, there are so many of these going on anymore. And we have to take them seriously, every one of them. We have to treat that as a real incident, which we did on this, because we just don't know. And it's very unfortunate. I wish we could get the message out to students that, you know, when they think about these, the consequences of these to them, when they are found out, but also the disruption and the fear and everything that it puts in other students and so forth. And uh, it's unfortunate that uh, we, we have to treat every one of them as though it's the real thing. And uh, I hate to say it, but hopefully students, this isn't going to be something that students just have to be become accustomed to. Uh, we've had two now in the last two months. <clears throat> Excuse me. We had a bomb threat that wasn't real, and that child was apprehended at that time. And now this is our second different type of thing in two months. So. We hope it isn't a pattern here, but we do know uh, all schools are facing these today, unfortunately. Will the student likely be suspended or expelled? Pardon? Will the student likely be suspended or expelled? Well, that decision will be made at a later date. Uh, obviously, there have to be consequences when uh, these types of things happen, but I don't want to say at this time what we will be doing or not. What Depends on the situation, the student, and everything. What happened to the student who made the bomb threat? The student who made the bomb threat, uh, we did do an expulsion. Already? Yes. Oh, that was from the, the how and you explained to us too how social media has changed everything in the last few years. Well, that's unfortunate. I think we're all aware of that. I, people see it on TV. Uh, what for whatever reason? I think 
be it children or adults, the reason we're seeing so many things happen in our country is there's a certain segment of population out there that uh, this appeals to them and they want to try and do it. That's what we hear when we read it. It's unfortunate, but it's something we're going to have to deal with. I know we want to try and do a better job as we hear all the time. I listen to TV and listen to uh, professionals say we've got to do a better job of identifying children who may, and, and adults who may uh, pre predispose to do things. But that's, you know, having said that, it's easy to say, but it's very difficult because uh, you really don't know. So just uh, something we have to be prepared for. And again, I will tell you, as a school, as all schools, it's something we prepare for. I've been doing this for many, many years, and it really, the landscape has changed in the last few years. Uh, we never used to have to do, many years ago, code reds and et cetera. It's just part of our routine now. Every year we practice these things for these situations. And again, I would compliment our staff and our students. I watched, I'm in the CC building, which is one of the two buildings. My office, I went out in the halls and I watched how quickly at code red came, our staff and students reacted. And they closed those doors, turned off the lights, and it was dead silence in there, very quickly. And then to, for me, the amazing thing was to go back down then to the other building, the, where the seventh and eighth grader house, and see how many uh, law officers were already there. Uh, that was a compliment to them too, and made us feel a lot better when we had that kind of uh, law enforcement there. Did social media actually play a great part of role in this? And can you tell us the great role? Pardon? Did social play, media play any role in this? No, I, no I, I, don't, I don't know that. So I can did, that. Uh, do you know the uh, grade of the student? Uh, no. How, how well did the system work to, to notify parents? What do you know so uh, far about I think, I think really good. We have, as most schools do, we have a system now in place, again, that we didn't have years ago, where we have parents that we can get put it on the out on the right quickly out online either by emails or phone messages we have all those ways and we put it out quickly to let people know and then that we had the code red going on and then after that when we determined that we were going to send the children home we sent out another message at that time we also told the parents that the children were safe because that's the thing parents want to know are their children safe and they were safe do, do parents end up hearing on the radio or on twitter or something before you're able to get that message well that's out? possible one thing we do know uh children have cell phones what we've learned even in our bomb scare was they're calling mom and dad right away. So we do know they get out there real fast. But we also think our turnaround time is really good with the systems schools have nowadays, which we can pop it out on the internet really quickly. I'm sorry, can you explain what Code Red means in your district? Yeah, Code Red just simply means that's a major shutdown. We lock the doors, we turn off the lights. That's our most highest level of uh, safety. When we say Code Red, we lock up the doors to the room. Children are in the rooms. And uh, it's the highest level. And how often do you practice that? Uh, five or six times a year. Okay. Plus, we have our fire drills and everything on top of that. Do you know when the last drill was? I do not. Different buildings have them at different times. We don't do them all at the same time. Is there something on the middle school site, or was it just the district site that this, that this went out on? No, it went out on the district wide. District wide. Did it go out on the middle? I mean, if parents no. checked the middle school site, would they have seen something? They would have seen it on any of the sites. Any of the, all the buildings we know. We were taking our kids' homes. We had to let all parents know. And also know that we had a code red. So it went out to all parents who in our system subscribed to be a part of that. Any final, many, final questions? So we how many go. students do you have, sir, in these two buildings? In these two buildings, we have about a little over 900 in these two middle school buildings. We have two buildings in the middle school. We have about 4,000 kids district wide. Okay, in closing and ending, uh, what I want to do is extend a thank you to a lot of people that are standing over here off the counter, uh, off the camera. Uh, I did name a lot of the agencies that uh, uh, helped here. I may have missed some. I apologize for that. Uh, but the law enforcement community in Scott and Research County in this region that all responded here uh, did an excellent job. Uh, officers from the Shockley Police Department that are investigating this, uh, the Scott County Sheriff's Department that took lead on one of the other buildings. Uh, everybody did an excellent job. I very much appreciate their help. Uh, I expect their help. I know they're coming, uh, as we would for them. Um, and I just want to make sure I thank all of them. Thank you. Thank you all.